Okay, so for the next kind of problem, if this said in basic solution, everything we just did is exactly the same. You pretend like it's acidic until the very last step. The only difference between an acidic reaction and a basic reaction is that of course, we're not gonna use H plus in an acidic, sorry, in a basic reaction because H plus is acid. So what, the way to deal with that is just adding an equal number of hydroxide to however many hydrogen ions you have. So we have 16H plus. I'm gonna add 16 OH minuses. And of course, when I do that, that's gonna become 16 water molecules. If I added 16 OH minuses to the left, I also need to do it on the right. So basic math, right? If I add 16 to one side and I add 16 to the other side, I haven't actually changed the problem at all. In chemistry, it has physical meaning, right? We're getting rid of those hydrogen ions, but you know, it's still mathematically a valid choice. Okay, so now instead of 16 hydrogen, we have 16 water on the left. And I noticed that we have eight water over here. So they are gonna cancel out. All these waters are gonna cancel and I'm gonna take away eight of those because I just canceled them on that side. So in the end, we end up with eight water plus two manganese O4 plus five oxalic, oxalate actually, plus 10 CO2 plus two manganese ions plus no water, they canceled out already but we have these 16 hydroxides here. So that's how you handle it when the problem says, no, balance the reaction in, in a basic solution. Or if the problem tells you that it's got a high pH. Okay? So the same all the way through, except the very end, however many H plus you have, it could be on either side, by the way, but however many you have, you add to both sides, cancel your waters. So, this is an opportunity. We're gonna put this into the learning check. I think we're at number seven now, number six. I can't remember. Whichever one we're at now, you're gonna do this problem. Use the last example of acidic and basic calculations to sort of figure this out. And then you're gonna upload a photo. So. I say learning check. This is going to be a file type. So you're going to upload a picture of your work. Make sure you're showing me as many steps as you can. So if there's errors, I can help you to progress. Okay. So just a review real quick. Uh, if an oxidation number is going from zero to plus one, in order to get these charges to add up, right? This is positive. This is zero. In order to get them to add up, we have to add a negative charge to the right. So negative one plus one is zero. Similarly here, plus three goes to plus two. In order to do that, it had to have one electron added as a reactant. Sometimes people struggle a little bit with this, so I like to present it as a number line, right? And so when we go from zero to plus one, that's an increase in the oxidation state, which is called oxidation, meaning it lost an electron to do that. Minus a minus gives us a positive charge overall. On the other hand, what we have here is we're going from a plus three to a plus two. That's a reduction in the charge in the oxidation state. So the name reduction is because the oxidation state is gonna go down, plus three to plus two. Things can be oxidized from any number downward. Things can be, sorry, that was backwards. Things can be reduced from any number downward. It's always going down in value. Oxidations go up in value. So if your charge has increased, that means that your particle gave away electrons. If your charge has decreased, it absorbed them. That's because electrons are negative. So quick summary, try to fill it in, see if you can get it. So the thing being reduced is gaining electrons. Reduction is gain. 
it causes the other element to oxidize. So if it's gaining electrons, it has to be getting them from someplace. So the other element is the thing giving them up. So A, it's causing element B to oxidize. So A is the oxidizing agent. Same system. So B is the one being oxidized, which means it is losing electrons. So B causes A to reduce or be reduced. There we go. So it is the reducing agent. Okay, so practice these a lot. It should become sort of fluent for you to convert in between these things. And so what I want you to do is give these a shot and we're going to put them into the learning check. It's okay if they're not right, but basically just go through and find the oxidation state of each thing, find what's changing and identify if that change is a reduction or an oxidation and then assign our vocab words. more practice. So however many of these you do is how many points you're going to get. Okay, even if they're not right, I want you to at least try these. There's lots and lots and lots of practice here. So now you might have been wondering this whole time, why do we even care about reduction and oxidation? Well, because it's, it's really applicable to everyday life and it can save you a lot of money if you understand how it works.